Hey guys, I'm Ethan with GoBuilda, and today we're going to show you how to rig up a belt drive Viper slide kit. Here we've got a four stage belt drive Viper slide kit that's assembled as far as the assembly instructions on the website take you. So the motor's mounted, the slides are mounted, and all of the accessories that allow you to drive it with the belt. In addition, We'll need the, our two belt clamps and their included hardware. We'll need two 16 millimeter screws, two washers, and two eight millimeter spacers. We'll use the included tools, which are a three millimeter hex key, a two and a half millimeter hex key, and a seven millimeter wrench. And we'll need some way to cut the belt. We like using side cutters. The first step to putting our slide together is we're going to attach a belt clamp to our belt. We're gonna start by unspooling a little bit of our belt and facing the teeth down and holding it out in front of us. We're gonna grab a belt clamp and slide it over the end of the belt, making sure the eyelet, or this four millimeter hole, is facing us. We're then gonna loop about 20 millimeters of the belt and hold it together so that the teeth mesh. And we're gonna slide the belt clamp over those meshed teeth. Next, we'll take our eight millimeter spacer and put it through the loop in the belt we just made. We can then take the belt and pull it through the belt clamp until the hole on the spacer aligns with the hole on the belt clamp. We're then going to take our washer and put it between the spacer and the hole in the belt clamp. And finally, we can take our screw and feed it through all three holes. So through the spacer, through the washer, and through the belt clamp. And we can use our two and a half millimeter hex key to bolt that to this last bearing mount on our slide system. Next, we're going to extend the slide all the way. Your belt will unspool a little bit in that process, and that's okay. We're gonna unspool the rest of the belt, but you wanna make sure that the belt isn't twisted. Throughout this whole slide process, it's important that the belt doesn't get twisted, but here is an especially easy place to do it. So we're gonna feed this through, and I like to feed it through my fingers so I make sure the orientation is always the same, and I can work out any twists near the end. Now, we're gonna first thread it through this idler bearing with a shield that's mounted to the 1121 series low side U channel. We're gonna feed a lot of the belt through. When we get near the end of our slack, we're gonna loop it around the pulley on the motor and loop it around that idler bearing. So see here, we're gonna go over the pulley and over this bearing like so. Now we're gonna take, we're gonna leave a little bit of slack in this belt right here. If you were to pull this belt, it's gonna retract the slide. So we're gonna push the slide the rest of the way out, give ourselves a little bit of slack and set this belt back behind most of the slide. We're gonna be working with this end and we'll call that the working end through the rest of this video. So we're gonna do a very similar thing where I'm gonna feed the belt through my hands and keep the orientation the same the whole way. That'll make sure I don't miss any twists. And then I'm gonna feed it up through this idler right here. We'll pull the slack through that bearing. And do pretty much the same process. We'll feed the belt through my hand and it'll go up through this bearing right here. Pull the slack out, make sure there are no twists in the belt so far and repeat this process to go up the length of the slide. Now the order goes, um, if you're on the side closer to the motor, you're gonna go over to the end of the slide system. Then you're gonna go up and back you're gonna go over and stay on the same slide and then go up and back again. And that's because to extend the slide system, this bearing needs to pull on this bearing. So it goes over and then back and then this bearing, this bearing needs to pull on this bearing to get that next stage to extend. So we're gonna go over and up throughout the whole system. And every time we're always going to go up through the bottom of the bearing shield.
Here, we've gone through the whole process. There are no twists, and we're at the last bearing. We're gonna go through the same process we've done. Go up through the bottom and pull all of the remaining slack out of the system. Now to make it a little easier to work with, we're going to actually retract the slide. So first, we need to get rid of the slack on the return cable right here. So we're going to pull our belt through our whole system until this goes taut. We're then gonna grab the bulk of the belt and the last stage of the slide system. And we are just gonna keep those tight and retract the whole slide system. This should back drive the motor, but depending on how much slack you have, it might just skip the teeth on the pulley. Either one is just fine. Now you have a bunch of extra belt and we've got to determine what length belt you need. The first thing we're we'll gonna do is we're going to bolt a spacer onto the end stop plate. You'll use the 16 millimeter screw and that eight millimeter spacer, and you'll screw them through the bearing mount plate into the, end, the threaded holes on the end stop plate. This is temporary, so we don't have to get that tight at all. Next, we're gonna form a loop approximately as long as we want the belts to be, and that's gonna loop around this spacer right here. Before we do that, we're going to install this remaining uh, belt clamp. So we'll slide that on the belt. And we'll make a loop of about the length we're looking at. Next, we're gonna pick, we're gonna leave about three inches of extra belt here. That's probably more than you will need. I'm sure you'll trim off more later, but leaving extra at this step is nice because it means you don't risk cutting it too short. We're just gonna use the side cutters and snip that ex excess belt and we'll set that aside. Now, we're going to make a loop with our belt, very similarly to what we did before. Mesh those two together and slide our belt clamp on it. Now we have a constrained loop that we can set over that spacer we just installed and we have a very quick way to adjust the tension of our system. This is a pretty loose slide. Doesn't make any notes when you strum it like a guitar. So I think we're going to want to increase the tension. Now a lower tension system will slide easier, but it will be a lot easier to skip the slide system with the motor. It'll require less torque for that motor to not be able to uh, spin the slide any longer. So we're after a little bit more tension than this. You can keep adding tension until your motor stalls, or in some situations you may want to allow the belt to skip, uh, especially if you're not using encoders on your lift and you want to run until the end. It'll give you a very noticeable kind of audible warning when the belt skips. So I'm going to move this forward a few teeth. Each tooth you move this second loop forward is one millimeter. So we're gonna move this a few millimeters, slide our belt clamp back over that loop, and we're gonna grab it and pull it over that spacer, just like before. We're getting closer to the amount of tension I want. I think I want about two more millimeters. So we let four millimeters of slack there. So we'll go one, two, three, four, five, six. We'll pinch that together and use the belt clamp to hold the location. That's the right amount of tension for our application. So what we're gonna do is slide our belt clamp forward and we're gonna cut some of this excess uh, belt off. Now, this is an issue because when you go to extend that very last stage, your belt hits the bearing before the slide finishes its extension. The slide could, in theory, extend all the way out to here but because our belt is too long, it's gonna stop and get jammed before that happens. Now that we've set our tension, we're going to pick, um, we're gonna say about here, and we're gonna cut that with our side cutters. Next, we're going to remove this spacer and we're going to install this end stop more permanently. You'll notice that these two are right now installed differently. This is a much faster way to adjust the tension with the bearing mount not permanently attached to, or excuse me, with the belt clamp not permanently attached to the last stage. With this other method where the belt clamp is permanently attached, it's much less likely to accidentally fall off if something were to happen and this could hop that button head for some reason. So we'll go ahead and remove 
the belt from that spacer and we will unscrew the spacer and screw. We'll use that spacer and just like before, we're gonna put it in the loop and we'll pull the belt through the clamp until those two holes align. We'll grab our washer and put it between the belt and the belt clamp and we'll take our screw and thread it through all three of those holes. And we're gonna screw it in the same situation. Here you need to make sure you don't cross thread that thread because it is pretty easy to do because you've got a lot of tension on that belt pulling your uh, screw this way. We'll go ahead and tighten that up and our slide system is all put together. We're going to add the two screws and two nuts that clamp on to the belt just to make sure it can't skip even under really heavy loads. So we'll use the nut and the button head that are included with the belt clamps and we'll tighten that up just so much that the two faces of the clamp touch. You really don't have to give these a ton of torque. And that's it. Your slide is now assembled and ready to be used and make sure to fine tune the tension to your liking. If you have any questions about this or other products we sell on GoBuilda, make sure to shoot us an email to tech at gobuilda.com.